damn near anything we could think is real. And if it's not, we could create it. See, that's the gift we were given to evolve, advance, create. I create my own world. I can make any situation reality. Imagine you had everything you wanted, everything. Imagine you were everything you ever wanted to be and capture that feeling. That's the easiest way to manifest what you want. That's all God wants to make us happy. It's the law of attraction I'm always talking about. Shit, look it up. I read a couple books on it, but it changed my life. Even in high school, teachers would always tell me to snap out of it or snap back to reality. But I was in reality. It was real as it could be. It just wasn't there yet. It just wasn't that day. I got the car I was always dreaming about. I bought my mom a crib I always wanted to buy her. I do what I want, get money, whatever. I perform with my heroes, live a crazy ass life. I'm still learning though. I'll be stressed out. Things don't always go the way I intend them to. Not even half the time. But that's just the mystery of life. You gotta trust. Trust in the end result. Trust that it'll always be the best for you at that time. If you want a pair of shoes and they're at the store, they're really at the store. You just don't have it yet. It ain't like that shit don't exist. It's just really at the store. That's how I looked at my whole life. If I want it, if I believe I can have it, then that's my reality. I'll attract it. It'll attract to me. We can make any situation we think about real. Fuck letting life pass you by. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey of making all your dreams and goals reality. Because the journey makes you who you are. I create my own world. I can make any situation my reality. I don't want to be uh, an, an icon. Um, I want to be an idea. You know, I want to represent an idea. I want to represent possibilities. Um, I want to represent magic, right? That you're in a universe and two plus two equals four. Two plus two only equals four if you accept that two plus two equals four. Two plus two is going to be what I want it to be, mm -hmm. you know? And there's a, there's a, like there's a, there's a, a redemptive power that making a choice has, you know, rather than feeling like you're at a effect to all the things that are happening make a choice like you just decide what it's going to be who you're going to be how you're going to do it just decide and then from that point the universe is going to get out your way it's like it's water it wants to it wants to move and go around yeah. stuff you know so for for me i want to represent possibilities i want to represent the idea that you really can make what you want. One of my favorite books is The, the Alchemist, uh, Paolo Coelho. And that's just, I just believe that. I, I believe that I can create whatever I want to create. If I can put, put my head on it right, study it, learn the patterns, and, you know, I just, I, it's, it's hard to put into words, it's real metaphysical, esoteric nonsense, but I feel very strongly that we are who we choose to be. And when we talk about the law of attraction, there are virtually some born again Christians who say that's of the devil and you can't believe in that. So let me put this in perspective. For those of you who are Christians, for those of you who have different religious beliefs and wonder if the law of attraction is a conflict. First, it is not a conflict. It is science. It doesn't conflict with any spiritual or religious belief at all. It complements it. If you are a Christian, and I'll, and I'll speak specifically to the Christians because all the letters have come in from Christians. 
So if you are a Christian and you have concerns about the law of attraction, let me ask you a couple questions. As a Christian, do you believe in the law of gravity? Now think about it. It's the law of gravity. Do you have any problem with the law of gravity? No. Well, do you know at some points, some of these laws were said to be of the devil? Here's one of them. As a Christian, do you have any problem with the law of lift? You know, the law that makes an airplane fly? Think about it. When the law of lift started to be discussed, Christians said that is of the devil. Because if God wanted man to fly, he would have given man wings. Think about it. Obviously, the law of lift is not a spiritual law. It is a, a law based on physics. Radio waves. When this first came out, the ability to transmit invisible frequencies through the ether so that voices could magically appear in boxes, that was thought to be of the devil. And anybody who wanted to play around with this should be burned at the stake for being a religious heretic. Because this was not scriptural, not biblical, not godly to start messing around with things that are not natural. Well, certainly radio waves are natural. Microwaves are natural. There's nothing mystical or magical or spiritual. These are physical laws. The law of attraction is nothing more than a law of physics. It's not mystical, it's not magical, it's not spiritual. It has nothing to do with God. And the fact that the law of lift works, the fact that the law of gravity works, the fact that radio waves work, the fact that electricity works, and the fact that the law of attraction is true and works, does not discount God at all. It's just a physical law. And if you are a religious believer, this is what is in our physical universe. It's, it's, it's how the physical universe operates. And if you want to believe that God created this, this is what his creation is. He created the law of attraction for us to use and how the physical uh, uh, world operates. There's nothing mystical or magical. It is a physical, biological, uh, structural law of, of matter. This is when I got the secret thing, but I didn't know it was called the secret. I read the book, The Color Purple, and then went out and got books for everybody else I knew. And I was obsessed about this story, obsessed about it. I ate, slept, thought all the time about The Color Purple. I moved to Chicago. I get a call from a casting agent asking, would I like to come and audition for a movie? I've never gotten a call in my life from anybody for a movie or anything like that. And I say, is it The Color Purple? And he says, no, it's a movie called Moonsong. And I go, well, I've been praying for the color purple. And I go to the audition, and of course it was the color purple. I audition. I don't hear anything for months. And I go to this, this fat farm, and I think it's because I'm fat, because I was about 212 pounds at the time. And I think, I didn't get the call back because I'm so fat. And I'm at this fat farm, and I'm praying and crying, saying to God, help me let this go because I wanted to be in this movie so much. I wanted it, I wanted it, I wanted it. I thought I was gonna be in the movie. There's all these signs that I should be in the movie. And I go to this fat farm and I'm praying and crying. And as I'm on the track singing the song, I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed savior. I surrender all. I'm singing that song, praying and crying. A woman comes out to me and she says, on the track, it's raining, and she says, there's a phone call for you. And the phone call was Steven Spielberg saying, I want to see you in my office in California tomorrow. Now, what I learned from that, it, that moment absolutely changed my life forever because I had drawn the color purple into my life. I didn't know Steven Spielberg. I didn't know Quincy Jones, who saw me in Chicago. In 1984, he was, he was there for a lawsuit that was being filed against Michael Jackson because he'd been working on his, his thriller album. And he saw me on AM Chicago and said, that's Sophia. 
Now, I didn't know him. I didn't know anybody that had anything to do with that. But I knew that I had drawn that into my life. And it changed the way I thought about my life forever. You really can change your own reality. Do you understand that, that all of this, this entire event is happening inside you? We'll just try to feel it for a second, because it's a trip, man. Some people go to the Super Bowl. I am the Super Bowl, man. I swear. My friends are all going, did you see that play? That was great. I'm like, yeah, but the energy coming out of me right now, man, is unbelievable. I'm just sitting there. I'm the stadium. I'm the vendors outside. I'm the crack dealer on the corner. I'm everything, man. There's no end to it, and it's so much fun. It's so much fun. So I hope you can feel that, and I hope you understand that you are one of the creators of this evening, that your intentions and your desires created this evening as well. And then I hope you are able to ask yourself, why did I get such a crappy seat? And be okay with it. I mean, you're in the last row, in the last seat. And yet you created this. And that's got to be a really selfless thing to do. A lot of people were surprised when they found out that you've been signing your name as Champ 2011. How did that come about? Uh, you know, I believe in the law of attraction, and I believe that um, that you can speak things into existence. And I believe that um, once you, when you know where you're going and you know what you want, uh, the universe has a way of stepping aside for you. And uh, me signing my uh, my signature uh, with Champion 2011 on it, um, it can't hurt me. It can't hurt me. It could uh, it could only help me to believe it even more. You know. So uh, so so yeah. I mean, it works for me. You've been saying something that, that I find to be very interesting, that the butterflies in your stomach are in form formation. Right. I've never heard that before. I think it makes a lot of sense. What do you mean by that? Elaborate. What I mean by it? Okay, so um, the butterflies in formation. Basically, it means um, when you have butterflies and you're feeling anxious and, and you have anxiety or, or nervous, um, that's when you're most powerful, I believe. And uh, either you can... Uh, yeah, you're most powerful. So um, a lot of people, instead of homing this power, um, and using it, uh, they allow it to just consume them. You know, uh, there's another quote that says, um, a big challenge or big pressure is like a fire. It's like a raging fire. Either you can allow this fire to consume you and just take you over completely, or you can gain control of this fire and harness it and you blow it right at your opponent like it's Dragon Ball Z style. All right, so that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I try to get my emotions under control and use this adrenaline to my advantage. Jones! I always felt like I could do anything. That's the main thing people are controlled by. Thoughts, their perception of themselves. They're slowed down by their perception of themselves. If you're taught you can't do anything, you won't do anything. Mm. I was taught I could do everything. My mother made me believe in myself. No matter how many people tell me, stop believing in yourself. Stop saying what you can do. Stop affirming what you're gonna do and then, and then completing that in real life. That's the improper way to do it. I refuse to follow those rules that society has set up in the way that they control people with low self-esteem. I've always had visions of better. I've always visualized better and in times of struggle. Like driving around, driving down in a banger of a car that I had to push start. I'd be still driving a soft top Bentley around beautiful California in my head. And lo and behold, now I am driving a beautiful soft top Bentley around California. So I always visualized good things. I always visualized victory, success, abundance. I visualized it all and it's all happening. Yeah, I don't just knock them out, I picked around John. Yeah, I said this, I'm sure you're probably all thinking in your head, this guy is talking absolute dribble. He's not gonna do what he says he's gonna do. You're probably all sitting there thinking that. 
But now here we are again, and I done what I said I was gonna do. I feed off this, I feed off this. I love this stuff, this is what gives me energy. Saying I'm gonna do something, saying, putting it out there for the world to see, and then going out and doing it. There's no better feeling in the world than that, and it's as easy as that. Say what you're gonna do, and go and do it. I knew I was gonna be the person to bring martial arts to the public eye. And now it's happening, you know what I mean? There's two things I've learned from, all, from these past seven months. Number one is that hard work pays off. And number two is that dreams come true. And that's what's happening. It's a beautiful feeling when, when preparation meets opportunity, you know, nothing, nothing is impossible, you know what I mean? You can, you can achieve anything. I'm gonna continue going on this journey and if the title shot is next, I will take it. If not, at the end of the day, I already feel like that is mine. I already feel like that belt is mine. So eventually, one by one, I will get every single one of them until there is no one left. And then I will decide what to do from there. But the belt is already mine, I feel. So let me share some of the concepts that have helped keep me on my game. So the first one is like attracts like. You have to understand, you are a magnet. Whatever you are, that's what you draw to you. If you're negative, you're gonna draw negativity. You positive, you draw positive. You're a kind person, more people are kind to you. So you're like a magnet, you know, and you gotta understand something about like attracts like. If you see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. This is so true. You've got to grab this. You gotta create dream boards. You gotta put the new car up on your mirror. Put the weight you wanna be on the refrigerator. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. That's the law of attraction. That's what you bring to you. Okay, moving on. The next principle. Ask, believe, receive. So many people overlook this very simple quality. You don't have to figure it out. That's what freezes people. When you're trying to figure out your life all the way to the end, when you can't figure it out, it freezes you from trying it because you go, oh, well, I can't figure that out. Oh, I can't go over there because I don't know how. You don't have to know how. You have to ask, believe, and receive. That's as simple as it gets, folks. It's very, very true. I really want you to understand that. Now, science says, show me and I'll believe. Faith says, believe and I'll show you. There is a difference. Next, very important. Gratitude is a powerful process. The only way to move to the next level is you must show gratitude for where you are. If you show gratitude, it gets you to where you want to be quicker. Very true. This is the last one. Laughter attracts joy, and it releases negativity, and it leads to some miraculous cures. 